Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the United States Southern Command Change of Command Ceremony, in which General Larry J. Richardson, United States Army, will relinquish command to Admiral Alvin Holsey, United States Navy, and retire from the Army after 38 years of distinguished and honorable service. United States Southern Command is composed of five components and three joint task forces. They are represented at today's ceremony by their commanders and their command senior enlisted leaders. The service components are United States Army South, headquartered at Fort Sam Houston, Texas. United States Marine Forces South, headquartered at New Orleans, Louisiana. United States Naval Forces South, headquartered at Naval Station Mayport, Florida. United States Air Forces Southern, headquartered at Davis Mountain Air Force Base, Arizona, and United States Special Operations Command South, headquartered at Homestead Air Reserve Base, Florida. The Joint Task Forces are the Joint Interagency Task Force South, located at Key West, Florida, Joint Task Force Guantanamo, located at Guantanamo Naval Base, Cuba, and Joint Task Force Bravo, located at Solicano Air Base, Honduras. We are honored to have as our special guests today, representatives of many nations with which we are proud to partner with in Latin America and the Caribbean. To have as our special guests today, representatives of many nations with which we are proud to partner with in Latin America and the Caribbean. Here today with us are senior partner nation leaders from Antigua and Barbuda, Argentina, Bahamas, Barbados, Belize, Brazil, Canada, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Dominica, Dominican Republic, El Salvador, Ecuador, France, Grenada, Guatemala, Guyana, Haiti, Honduras, Jamaica, Panama, Paraguay, Peru, Saint Lucia, Saint Kitts and Nevis, Saint Vincent and the Grenadines, Suriname, the Netherlands, Trinidad and Tobago, the United Kingdom, and Uruguay. Also represented are members of the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, the Inter-American Defense Board, and the Regional Security System. We would also like to welcome members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, interagency and senior leaders of the federal, state, military, and civilian community. We are especially honored to welcome the Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin III, who will preside over today's ceremony, and our guest speaker, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Charles Q. Brown, Jr., United States Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for honors, the presentation of colors, national anthem, and the invocation delivered by Chaplain Rodriguez, United States Navy, United States Southern Command Chaplain.
Let's bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, who reigns in splendor and majesty, we acknowledge your divine presence and power as we seek the blessings that will sustain and guide us through this change of command ceremony. With exuberant alacrity, we have witnessed the wisdom excelled, the knowledge given, and the amazing art of decision-making offered by our commanding general, Laura Richardson. We are here this afternoon to bid her farewell for a job well done. As General Richardson steps down from a very successful tour and career, we are reminded that success expresses the effort of the whole command, and especially her husband's support, Lieutenant General Jim Richardson retired, the love of their daughter and granddaughter, and the well wishes of all her family members who are here and online this afternoon. We welcome Admiral Alvin Holsey, his wife Stephanie, his mother Rosa, and their sons. And as many other family members who have traveled here, I ask for your blessing as he is ready to fleet up and assume command of this mighty enterprise. Eternal Father, behold your servants, called by you and called by our nation to the sacred duty to be good stewards of your treasure. Grant us strength and wisdom. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the 21st Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Charles Q. Brown, Jr., United States Air Force. Well, good afternoon. It is a, uh, it is a real pleasure to be here. You know, American leadership author Simon Sinek once said, a team is not a group of people that work together. A team is a group of people that trust each other. And we're here today to recognize General Laura Richardson and Admiral Alvin Hosley, two leaders who championed team democracy and built trust with their allies and partners across the Caribbean, Central, and South America. Before going any further, I'd like to thank all those here today to celebrate this very important day United States Southern Command. We have an extensive list of distinguished visitors here, including my boss, Secretary of Defense uh, Lloyd Austin, but to our government uh, and elected officials, our civic leaders, our Department of Defense leadership, general and flag officers, senior civil leaders, welcome and thank you for being here. To our partners from across the, the Southcom region, we made the trip. We very much appreciate you being here today for this very special occasion. We're also here to honor the men and women of U.S. Southcom. Their unwavering commitment and selfless service to our nation. We thank you for all you do to defend our nation and achieve collective security in our shared neighborhood. And we thank your families for the unparalleled support they provide you. I'd like to especially recognize two families who have each dedicated decades in service to our nation. Trina and I would like to uh, thank General Laura Richardson's uh, family and friends today, particularly her husband, Jim. Uh, you know, they met at Fort Rucker when Jim was teaching at the captain's uh, career course and Laura was at fight school. I understand it was love at first sight for Jim, not, not so much for Laura. Laura took about a week or so to decide that she was even interested in the man that she would eventually marry. Together they rose to the ranks, becoming the first couple to command in combat together as battalion commanders in the 101st Airborne Division. They both deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan, and throughout their careers, Laura and Jim have supported each other and pushed each other, reaching the highest levels of Army and Joint Force leadership. Now, Laura comes from a uh, highly accomplished Army family. Her father, Darwin, was an Army doctor. Her grandfather was an Army attorney. Her brother, Darwin, was an Army attorney. 
Her sister Janice and husband David were both Army doctors. Laura was really the uh, underachiever of the group. I'm sure it was a little awkward uh, conversation when she uh, told her parents and her brothers, um, I don't want to be a doctor or an attorney. I want to be a helicopter pilot. And finally, I would like to recognize Laura's uh, and Jen's finest accomplishment, their daughter, Lauren. Lauren, it was a pleasure to meet you today. Lauren, as a, mili as a military kid, uh, deserve a lot of credit for their service. You had to worry about uh, two parents, do multiple combat tours, including two joint deployments. We thank you for your years of service alongside your parents. And I know Laura's favorite role over the years has been mother and grandmother. Trina would also like to welcome the uh, family and friends of Admiral Alvin Hosley. Alvin's wife, Stephanie, is a dentist who's practiced in five different states over the course of her career. Uh, they met uh, at, uh, while well, Alvin was at uh, Morehouse College and Stephanie was at Stratton. They are the perfect spell house couple that have two sons, Joshua and Jordan, who had the opportunity to meet uh, earlier today. And they both followed in their parents' footsteps. Uh, Joshua is uh, following his father's footsteps, earning a, a Navy commission from Morehouse and uh, becoming a naval aviator. And I understand he's in uh, weapons school right now and just spent a little time away uh, today and going to fly back to get back to school later this evening. And then their youngest son, Jordan, following in his mother's footsteps into medicine. And he's currently in his third year of medical school at the University of Virginia. I'd also like to welcome Alvin's uh, mother, Rosa, a retired educator who raised her four sons to value faith, family, education, and service. We also welcome Alvin's brothers, brothers and sister-in-law, Alex, Eric, and Tanja. Thank you also for being here today. Like General Richardson, Alvin comes from a long legacy of military service. Alvin's late father, Charles Sr., served in the Army during the Korean War. And Alvin has six uncles who served, three in the Navy and three in the Army. To both families, thank you for the love and support you've given to these extraordinary leaders over the years. Let's give these families a round of applause. You know, the United States Army was fortunate that Laura wanted to join. She was a licensed pilot at 16, an all-American swimmer in high school and college, and understand she loved push-ups. I'm not sure if you still do. Laura took that discipline and stamina to the Army and became a helicopter pilot. She's had a career full of first. Laura was the first woman in the Army to serve as a division deputy commander. She was the first woman to lead the U.S. Army Forces Command, the Army's largest command, and the first woman to lead U.S. Southern Command. Over four decades, she has led at every level with exceptional operational skill and courage, and even carried the nuclear football for the Vice President. As SOUTHCOM commander, she deepened key relationships throughout the Caribbean, Central, and South America. She strengthened regional security, countered threats, built, and built capacity through enhanced communication, shared intelligence, and joint military activities. Laura, on behalf of the 2.1 million women and men in uniform and their families. Trina and I thank you and Jim for your decades of service to our nation. We wish you both the very best as you head back to Myrtle Beach. Congratulations and thanks for your leadership. today, a stellar leader became our Joint Forces' newest four-star. Admiral Bull Halsley is well prepared to accept the roles and responsibilities of this new rank and well prepared to lead the United States Southern Command. And that's not just because he's another helicopter pilot. Actually, I think when we went through the process with the Secretary, we didn't put that into the uh, equation, but uh, I guess it works. And what stands out about Bull is his genuine, genuine leadership. He leads with compassion and empathy. 
striving to help all he's privileged to lead reach their full potential. He's demonstrated operational excellence worldwide, deploying multiple times on nine ships and commanding Carrier Strike Group 1. He's the first commander of the International Maritime Security Construct, setting up expeditionary headquarters to protect navigation and stability in the Middle East. After serving as uh, commander of Navy Personnel Command, Bull came to SOUTHCOM in February of 2023. As a military deputy commander, he helped get assets to Haiti to support medical, transportation, emergency evacuation services during unrest, established SOUTHCOM as an innovation test bed, and furthered our Joint Forces modernization, and provided oversight for Joint Task Force Guantanamo. Bull personally solved a 20-year pay issue for Honduran locally employed staff, enhancing a long-standing relationship with one of our partner nations. Based on your tremendous work as a SOUTHCOM military deputy commander, Bull, I am sure you will continue to strengthen regional relationships and lead SOUTHCOM to new heights. Bull, Stephanie, she and I wish you both the best as you take on this new leadership responsibility. We in the joint team have complete confidence in your leadership and trust SOUTHCOM will continue to excel. Laura, Bull, the two of you have been outstanding leading the SOUTHCOM team, building trust with your SOUTHCOM teammates and their families, building trust with our partners across the Caribbean, Central and South America. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Bull, for your service and your dedication to our nation. God bless you and your families. God bless the SOUTHCOM team and their families. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you. At this time, please remain seated as General Richardson and Sergeant Major Rodriguez present the Joint Meritorious Unit Award and Streamer to Headquarters United States Southern Command. The Joint Meritorious Unit Award recognizes joint units and activities for outstanding heroism or achievement performed during times of war, international tensions, national emergencies, or extraordinary situations that involve national interest. Please remain seated. The citation reads, Headquarters, United States Southern Command, distinguished itself by exceptionally meritorious achievement from the 21st of October, 2021, to the 4th of October, 2024. During this period, the men and women of Headquarters United States Southern Command, its security cooperation offices, and joint task forces demonstrated unparalleled professional skill and tireless effort in conducting operations and increased security cooperation activity in the Southern Command region. By their exemplary performance of duty, the members of Headquarters United States Southern Command have brought great credit to themselves and to the Department of Defense. Given under my hand this 30th day of August 2024, signed Charles Q. Brown Jr., General, United States Air Force, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. At this time, the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin III, the 28th Secretary of Defense, will conduct the change of command ceremony from General Richardson, United States Army, to Admiral Holsey, United States Navy. Please remain seated. Warriors, since the beginning of history, have traditionally rallied around a standard as a symbol of unity and loyalty. Today, the United States Southern Command continues this tradition. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the ceremony's most solemn moment, the actual changing of command. This ceremony is a tradition which formally restates to the officers, enlisted, and civilians of this command the continuity of command. It is a formal ritual conducted before the assembled unit. The transfer of the unit colors signifies the passing of responsibility, authority, and command from one commander to another. Now delivering the colors to the commander is the command senior enlisted leader, Sergeant Major Rafael Rodriguez, 
representing the importance of non-commissioned officers to the armed forces of the United States and within United States Southern Command. Sergeant Major Rodriguez will pass the colors to General Richardson, the outgoing commander. General Richardson relinquishes the colors to Secretary Austin, thereby signifying the termination of her period in command. Secretary Austin presents the colors to the new commander, Admiral Holsey, charging him with the responsibility for mission accomplishment and the welfare of his forces. United States Southern Command, Office of the Commander, Subject Assumption of Command, by authority of the President of the United States of America, the undersigned assumes command of the United States Southern Command, Doral, Florida, effective the 7th of November, 2024, signed Alvin Holsey, Admiral, United States Navy, Commander. Admiral Holsey assumes command and returns the colors to the command senior enlisted leader, signifying his acceptance of command responsibilities and the continuation of the mission. At this time, the United States Southern Command Service Member of the Quarter, Petty Officer Alex J. Brown, United States Navy, will present a bouquet of flowers to the commander's wife. Miss Stephanie Holsey will receive budded flowers for her contributions that will soon be realized as she begins her time with the United States Southern Command. At this time, General Richardson's spouse, Lieutenant General James Richardson, United States Army retired, and their daughter, Lauren Richardson, will be escorted to center stage for the retirement ceremony. Earlier today, Secretary Austin presented General Richardson with the Defense Distinguished Service Medal. He will now present General Richardson with her retirement certificate. The certificate reads, to all who shall see these presents greetings. This is to certify that General Laura J. Richardson, having served faithfully and honorably, will be retired from the United States Army on the first day of January, 2025. Signed, Randy A. George, General, United States Army, Chief of Staff of the Army. Thank you, Secretary Austin. In recognition of over 38 years of steadfast commitment and selfless and faithful service to our nation, General Richardson will now receive the flag of the United States. This flag was flown over the United States Capitol at the request of Representative Mario diaz Balart, representing Florida's 25th Congressional District, and was also flown over the Pentagon. This morning, the flag was flown over the United States Southern Command Headquarters, symbolizing her last day of command. Lieutenant General James M. Richardson, United States Army retired, will receive a certificate of appreciation for the unwavering support he has provided to General Richardson and the United States during General Richardson's entire distinguished career. The certificate reads, to all who shall see these presents greetings, this is to certify that Lieutenant General retired James M. Richardson, 
on the occasion of the retirement of your spouse from the United States Army has earned grateful appreciation for your own unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Your unfailing support and understanding help to make possible your spouse's lasting contribution to the nation. Signed, Randy A. George, General, United States Army, Chief of Staff of the Army. <laughs> Ms. Lauren Richardson will now receive a letter from the Secretary of the Army. The letter reads, Dear Ms. Richardson, thank you for the support you have selflessly given your mother, General Laura J. Richardson. Throughout her 38 years of service, your mother has been a trailblazer. She pioneered new approaches to complex problems, led and mentored thousands of soldiers and Army civilians, maintained our commitment to Army families, and set a new standard of success for officers, especially women in the military. You were an immeasurable part of her success. Army life can be challenging. The moving, the deployments, and the late nights spent away from home require sacrifice and commitment from our Army families. The success of our military depends on people like you who have given so much and displayed unwavering resilience and strength. On behalf of the United States Army, I wish to extend my heartfelt appreciation for your sacrifice, commitment, and devotion to your mother and the nation she has so faithfully served. Sincerely, Christine E. Wormuth, Secretary of the Army. <laughs> General Richardson's granddaughter, Anna, was unable to be with us today. Her mother, Lauren, will receive her letter on her behalf. Thank you, Lieutenant General Richardson and Lauren. Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin III. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I don't think there's anybody out there, Laura. Let's try that again. Good afternoon, Southcom. All right, all right. You know, I spent years stationed in Florida, so coming back to, to Florida feels like coming home. And it's an honor to have so many distinguished guests joining us, including state and local leaders, members of Congress, ambassadors and ministers of defense from Latin America and the Caribbean, and DOD leaders, past and present, and more. By the way, there's two pretty good DOD leaders that I served with that are in the crowd. I see Admiral Craig Fowler out there, and, and uh, I know Admiral Michelle Howard is in the crowd somewhere, Michelle. But these are, these are two, there you go, these are two pretty good sailors. You know, our... our United States Navy is doing great things, especially in the Red Sea currently. And I know Craig and Michelle spent a lot of time on surface combatants. Uh, probably never got into the kinds of fights that uh, we're seeing our, our sailors get in today, and they are performing magnificently. And a part of that's got to do with the training and discipline that you instilled as senior officers when you were wearing a uniform. So thanks for being here. It's great to see you. And Secretary Del Toro. I know you're it. There you go. Thanks for being here. It, it's great to see you, and, and, and I know you take great pride in the way our United States Navy is performing all around the globe today. Oh. <laughs> General Brown. Thanks for your remarks, <laughs> and thanks for your outstanding leadership as Chairman of the Joint Chiefs. 
And please join me in giving a warm welcome to the families of General Laura Richardson and Admiral Alvin Hosley. General Richardson, thanks for all that you've done to strengthen security and stability across the Americas. And we're lucky to have Admiral Halsey taking the helm. But you know, above all, this is, this is about the brave men and women of U.S. Southern Command. I want to thank you for defending our country with such patriotism and professionalism. Let's give Southcom a round of applause. Every day, Southcom keeps the watch throughout our hemisphere. This hemisphere is home to so many growing economies and vibrant democracies. But your AOR also includes pressing security challenges, including transformation of transnational crime, irregular migration, and fundraising by transnational terrorist groups, and natural disasters fueled by climate change. And so on every level, Southcom's mission is close to home. Southcom is focused on three priorities. Strengthening partnerships, countering threats, and building this team. And under General Richardson's leadership, that's exactly what Southcom has done. You know, when she took command, the world was still emerging from the COVID-19 pandemic. And Southcom had suspended nearly all of its joint exercises in 2020 and 2021 in order to protect our troops. And Southcom had provided crucial equipment and aid to help our partners beat the pandemic. So General Richardson, led the charge to safely re-engage. And on her watch, Southcom conducted 24 joint exercises. And all told, U.S. forces trained alongside nearly 40,000 participants from some 36 countries. Those exercises strengthened interoperability. They fostered trust and they forge stronger partnerships across the region. And that makes everybody more secure. And those strong ties are crucial to helping our neighbors. You know, right now, Haiti is struggling to restore security and opportunity for its people. And to end widespread gang violence, and to hold free and fair elections next year. Southcom and the department continue to support the UN authorized multinational security support mission in Haiti. And Southcom has coordinated critical logistics to help this Kenyan led UN mission ease the misery in Haiti. Together we've we've helped to reestablish security at the airport in Port-au-Prince. And that let security forces from Kenya and other countries safely arrive in Haiti. And we'll continue to support the Haitian security forces as they reestablish safety and stability for the Haitian people. Southcom has also led the department's work to strengthen the Colombian military and the Panamanian National Border Service. And that has helped, helped these countries counter transnational criminal groups operating throughout the Darien region. At a time of huge migration, 
and vast humanitarian challenges. With our partners in the region and alongside our teammates across the U.S. government, Southcom helps detect and monitor the trafficking of illicit drugs throughout the Americas. That helps law enforcement partners interdict the flow of illegal drugs. And last year alone, this team effort helped stop hundreds of tons of illegal narcotics, worth more than $7 billion from reaching America's shores. Now, Southcom has built partnerships from the Caribbean and Central America to the Southern Cone. But some other countries have approached the region very differently. We know that the People's Republic of China is out to expand its influence around the world, including the Americas. The PRC is working to exploit insecurity in our hemisphere. And as General Richardson has put it, to take advantage of the region's need for economic investment and to gain influence and advance the PRC's malign agenda. Now, the United States have, has a very different approach. You see, we're working hard to strengthen full and respectful partnerships rooted in our shared values of democracy, human rights, and opportunity for all. And every day, every day, Southcom proves that the United States is a friendly, capable neighbor. And as General Richardson has also said, the United States is proud to be the region's most trusted defense and security partner. So Southcom, you've got a lot to be proud of. But you know, progress doesn't just happen. It took skill, teamwork, and the visionary leadership of General Richardson. She's always shown grit, audacity, and a deep de dedication to the mission. Now, Falara, as you heard earlier, service is a family tradition. And so is excellence. Her dad, Jan Strickland, served in the Army Reserves. And I'm told that he turned 90 earlier this month. Her mom, Suzanne, worked as a teacher, and they both inspired their kids to work hard, to excel, and to be all that they could be. And two of Laura's siblings, Darwin and Janice, also served in the Army, deploying both to Iraq and Afghanistan. So, this is a tremendous military family. Let's give them another round of applause. Now, throughout General Richardson's life, she didn't just beat expectations. She set entirely new expectations for everybody else. As a teenager, when her friends were out getting their driver's license, Laura earned her private pilot's license. As you heard the chairman say, she just didn't just win races at the local swim meets, she set new state records. And after commissioning through Army ROTC, she continued to fly. And in flight school, she met another Army aviator named Jim. And after moves all around the world and multiple deployments to war zones, Jim and Laura have been, always been a phenomenal team. 
They were the first married couple in the history of the United States military to serve as battalion commanders in combat together. They've always had each other's back. And Jim had a tremendous career himself, retiring from the Army as a Lieutenant General. So Jim, thanks for your decades of service. And together they have raised an amazing daughter, Lauren. They've redefined what it means to be helicopter parents. Just checking to see if you're still there. <laughs> Lauren, thanks for the sacrifices that you've made to support your parents, especially when they were both deployed. Now, I know that Laura is excited to have much more time with her beloved granddaughter, Anna. So she's really looking forward to that. Let's give Jim, Lauren, and the whole family a hand. Now, I first met General Richardson when she was working in legislative affairs and bringing congressional delegations to Iraq. She was immediately impressive. And it's no surprise that she has continued to excel. She was the first woman to command U.S. Army North and the first woman to lead SOUTHCOM. General Richardson has broken barriers throughout her career. And she's always worked hard to ensure that every single service member, both men and women, can rise as high as their talent will take them. So, Laura, Congratulations on a job well done and on a career that will shine as a beacon. Thanks for your commitment to excellence. Thanks for your leadership and thanks for your 38 years of service to our nation. And I said earlier that she joined when she was one years old. Puts her right at 39 right now. Today, the leadership of U.S. Southern Command passes to Admiral Alvin Halsey. And Admiral, we're delighted to be joined today by your wife, Stephanie, and your sons, Joshua and Jordan. Also, I, I heard, uh, Admiral, that some of your fraternity brothers were here, but they're so silent, it can't be your fraternity, so. I think there's some Omegas out there, right? All right, there we go, there we go. Just checking. What's that? You told them to be quiet. I know Omegas, I'm impressed with what you've done. Now, Stephanie and, and, and Al met in, in college while she was a student at, uh, at Spelman and he was a student at Morehouse. And they have been unstoppable ever since. Stephanie is a dentist and they're hugely proud of their two sons. Jordan is in medical school at the University of Virginia and Josh is now a late Navy Lieutenant, as you heard the chairman say. He's carrying on the family legacy of military service. And like his old man, Joss is a, is a naval aviator, and he also flies helicopters. So. so thanks for everything that you've done to support your dad and your husband throughout 15 moves and seven deployments. It's also great to see Al's mom, Rosa, here today. 
As you heard earlier, she's a retired educator. And alongside her husband, Charles, she raised uh, Bull and his three brothers. Now, I'm told, by the way, Mom, that the first time you heard the word, word Bull, you were wondering who the heck they're talking about. <laughs> because your son is named Alvin. But he re renamed himself, you know, when he left home. So I, I feel comfortable when calling him Bull Halsey now. So, and I think I'm going to be okay with you when I, when I do that, right? Okay. Now, his dad, Charles, served in the Army during the Korean War, and together, Bull's parents taught him the importance of service and contributing to something bigger than yourself. An outstanding, outstanding family. Let's give the entire Halsey family a round of applause. And throughout his career, Bull Halsey has excelled. He has he's commanded the uh, helicopter squadron, the USS Macon Island, and Carrier Strike Group 1. And he's also served as an operations officer on the Joint Staff and as a Deputy Chief of Naval Personnel. At sea and ashore, the Admiral's teammates had admired his leadership and his work ethic. And those who have worked with him have probably heard him say, hard work is authorized. <laughs> but he's always made time for family as well. He's encouraged his teammates to do the same. And his whole career has prepared him for this new mission. Bull Halsey, Halsey most recently served as a military deputy commander of SOUTHCOM. So he's deeply familiar with the challenges that come with this vast area of responsibility. And ladies and gentlemen, we're making history today. We're making America more secure for sure, but we're also making history today. As the first woman commander of of SOUTHCOM passes the baton to the first African American commander of SOUTHCOM. And throughout Admiral Halsey's career, he has sometimes been the first, but he's always been the best. He's always focused on delivering, delivering for his sailors, delivering for his teams, and delivering for the American people. And that is exactly what I know he'll do as the SOUTHCOM commander. Bull, you are the right person for this moment and this mission. Thanks for your lifetime of leadership, and thanks for tackling this big challenge. There's no question that you have an exceptional team, and I just want to say thank you one more time. You know, this past summer, USNS Burlington deployed to Central and South America and the Caribbean as part of this year's Operation Continuing Promise. And at each stop, American medical teams worked alongside medical professions, professionals from our partner countries to take care of patients and to strengthen clinical infrastructure and more. In fact, since 2007, Operation Continuing Promise has treated more than 600,000 patients. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that's what SOUTHCOM is all about. So thanks for being good neighbors. Thanks for keeping this region safe. And thanks for defending our democracy and our values. 
Thank you, Southcom. May God bless you and your families, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing commander of United States Southern Command, General Laura J. Richardson, United States Army, retired. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Buenas tardes. Thank you so much for attending this, spe this special ceremony here at United States Southern Command. Both Admiral Holsey and I appreciate the amazing turnout today. Your presence, your presence here reinforces our shared values and our commitment to a free, secure, and prosperous Western Hemisphere and to team democracy. I would like to give a very warm welcome to ministers of defense, chiefs of defense, commissioners, chiefs of police, our congressional leaders, our ambassadors, community leaders, interagency, family and friends, and the Southcom team. It has been no easy task to put together a ceremony of this magnitude along with the other five events earlier this week. And so what I'd like to do is give a moment to recognize the entire team, including the fantastic 13th band, and give them a big round of applause for their great work. I would like to thank President Biden, Secretary Austin, and General Brown for their trust and confidence in me over the last three years in this very important position. President Biden has been a stalwart commander in chief. Both president, both the president and first lady's support of the military and our military families has been absolutely amazing. Thank you, Mr. President. Secretary Austin, I appreciate your meaningful words, and we're so glad that, um, please say hi to Charlene for me, yes, and pass our regards from Jim and myself. But I want to thank you for your leadership and guidance for 45 years of service to our nation and to our global security. You provided guidance and mentorship to me and also to my husband, Jim, when we were in uniform, when he was in uniform. And you have resourced Southcom more than any other Secretary of Defense. Thank you, sir. It's been my honor to serve under your leadership. It's an enormous responsibility to be charged with leading the defense of a nation. There are leaders from 32 nations that are here today who lead the defense and security of their countries and share that same huge responsibility. I want to thank you all for your selfless service and passionate commitment you bring to securing this hemisphere each and every day. Muchas gracias. As was said before, Secretary of, Secretary of the Navy, Carlos Del Toro, and your wife, Betty, thank you so much for you both being here. Thank you for the multiple trips in the region as well. Thank you. We also have several Western Hemisphere ambassadors to the United States. So they came from, uh, from DC here to attend today's ceremony and several U.S. ambassadors who are serving in the region as well. And I want to thank you so much. You all are amazing teammates. You are, you are our ground game for positive action in countries, in our own country. Thank you for your leadership and your service and support of Team Democracy.
Chairman, it's been a pleasure serving with you as the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs and the Chief of Staff of the Air Force. A big thank you to you and Shireen for being here. You're moving out on the joint warfighting concept and modernizing our joint processes, and it's been my honor to serve with you. Thank you. To our congressional leaders that are here today, Chairman diaz Bilart, Chairwoman Salazar, and also Chairman Jimenez, thank you so much for your leadership and your partnership. Chairman diaz Bilart, you've helped make our military family housing project a reality. Thank you. And Chairman, Chairwoman Salazar, you are co-sponsor on the bipartisan legislation called the Americas Act. And I'm grateful for that partnership. Thank you. And Chairman Jimenez, thank you so much for your work on the China Committee and Homeland Security, sir. Thank you. I would also like to thank Admiral Holsey and his lovely wife, Dr. Stephanie Holsey. Bull, you have been a phenomenal military deputy a great teammate for the past two years, and you have impacted this command and this hemisphere with your dynamic leadership. And I couldn't be more proud to turn over the reins of this great command to you. It will continue to thrive under your leadership. Thank you so much, Bull. And Admiral retired Craig Fowler, teammate, I changed command with Admiral Fowler three years ago, and we were right here in this same setting wearing our masks. And so I'm glad that we're not wearing our COVID masks for this change of command. And so I wanna thank you for your, your service, and thank you for being here today. That's very special. And I would like to thank my senior enlisted leader, Sergeant Major Rafael Rodriguez. Senior enlisted leaders are the secret sauce that make our military so effective. Thank you for being such a great Sergeant Major. And I want all the senior enlisted leaders to raise your hand because I wanna thank you for coming today to today's ceremony. So everybody raise your hand. I wish I could say that in Spanish, but I can't. There we go. Very proud of all of you. Thank you for being here. The challenges we collectively face are too great to take on alone. Our strength and success rests upon all of us working together as team democracy. A previous Minister of Defense gave an excellent quote, individually we are strong, but together we are invincible. Latin America and the Caribbean are the jewels of the Western Hemisphere. And it's a region that I believe is feeding and fueling the world and has been for the last 10 years. This vast region has 31 countries and 11 Caribbean territories and dependencies. Its security, stability, and prosperity remains a collective responsibility of all of us. COVID-19 left a severe impact on countries, economies, and transnational criminal organizations have taken advantage of that economic impact with a wave of crime in many of the countries. Violence and corruption are fueled by the transnational criminal organizations contributing to a surge in irregular migration across a region historically vulnerable to natural disasters and extreme weather. The People's Republic of China continues to take advantage and extract from the region while pretending to invest the PRC's Belt and Road Initiative has created more problems than it's fixed, and the PRC outsources its own unemployment problem by bringing in their people to do these big projects, not hiring your local people. Russia continues to employ malign activities, conduct high-level visits to Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua, and continues to bring warships into the region while spreading disinformation through Russia Today, Espanol, Sputnik Mundo, and Telesur. It's a steady drumbeat of undermining democracy and showing up 
just to conduct malign activity. This is a call to action, and this is a fight between democracy and autocracy. It's that simple. Our rules-based international order is at stake, and we have to stick together as team democracy. As I said before, this region is feeding and fueling the world, but not receiving the benefit from it. Through all of us working together as team democracy, a group of like-minded democratic countries, we all must bring our instruments of national power together to defeat the transnational criminal organizations, to outcompete malign state actors, and build the resilience, stability, and security that's necessary to make the American dream the America's dream. Southcom has been laser focused on assisting the Americas and strengthening their militaries and public security forces, deliver capability at the speed of relevance, and work on the stopwatch, not the calendar, so presidents can deliver for the, so these democracies, presidents can show that democracies can deliver for their people. These partnerships are what we call team democracy, and it's what team democracy is all about. Over the course of my 38 years in the military, I've received a lot of coaching and mentoring by so many. As we all know, in our line of work, people are the greatest asset in the military. And I've been honored to lead and have been led by some of the most amazing leaders. There, there are two leaders who were instrumental in my learning about leadership and aviation. My first battalion commander, Colonel Retired Al Patterson, who's here today, who taught me how to be a good company commander when he handed me the guide on and made me a company commander as a first lieutenant. Thank you, Al. And General Cody, who taught me how to be a battalion commander, and he taught me about readiness and maintenance. I brought these lessons and many more as I took command here at Southcom. U.S. Southcom is an amazing combatant command, one of only six geographic combatant commands in the Department of Defense. Yet Southcom's outsized impact is felt across 42 nations and dependencies in the Western Hemisphere. From increasing our security cooperation processes, conducting eight annual exercises, building and employment building and employing cyber assessment teams, conducting cyber hunt forward missions, implementing the theater maintenance partnership initiative with nine centers of excellence, implementing the UN security resolution 1325 women, peace and security, senior enlisted leader development program, economic security is national security initiative, the USNS comfort hospital ship providing the medical care, the human rights initiative, information operations, and logistics support to Haiti. The Southcom team has done it all. Southcom service members, government civilians, and contractors' steadfast devotion to duty has ensured that we continue to deliver on our enduring promise to the Americas. Thank you for your service. It's been an honor of a lifetime to serve along each side of you. I'd like to thank my interagency teammates here today, Assistant Secretary Todd Robinson from State Department INL, and XM Bank President Rita Jo Lewis, Inter-American Development Bank Jordan Swartz, Council of the Americas, the Atlantic Council. I also want to thank my civilian deputy, the commander, U.S. Ambassador Sarah Ann Lynch, and before her, U.S. Ambassador Jean Maines, you both are rock stars. Finally, to my family, you have been the greatest source of my strength, and I'm here today because of you. Both of my parents who are watching virtually were instrumental in my upbringing as an athlete. They introduced me to ROTC in college, and they instilled in me the competitive spirit and to never, ever give up. Thanks to my sisters Elaine and Janice and my brother Darwin, Thanks for your support and love. I love you guys. My husband Jim and I have been a package deal during our entire careers in the Army. 
and the Army has been really good to us, keeping us stationed together. Jim has gone into most positions before me, and I got to watch him and learn from all his mistakes. <laughs> Jim has been my first-hand coach and mentor for the last 37 years. He's been there every step of the way, and we have even been deployed together into Iraq, and then later in our careers, we deployed together to Afghanistan. And I hope we've been a good example for other dual military service members in our U.S. military to show that both service members can be successful in the military and they can also have a family. Thank you, Jim, for all your guidance and mentorship for close to four decades now. You are an amazing husband. I'm proud of you. I'm proud to have served with you. I love you. To my daughter, Lauren, who I'm most proud of, it's not easy being the kid of two type A parents who are in the military, especially when your dad and I deployed to Iraq at the same time. But you have done so well in your own life. You're strong and resilient and have a family of your own. Both your dad and I are so proud of you and love you very much. And a big shout out to our granddaughter, Anna, who's in school today. She's in second grade. My village of supporters is much larger than I was able to recognize today. But please know that I know everything that you all have done to support me, Jim, Lauren. Thank you. To everyone here, thank you. And God bless the Americas. Ladies and gentlemen, the 33rd Combatant Commander of United States Southern Command, Admiral Alvin Holsey, United States Navy. My mother told my brothers and I years ago that we were blessed and highly favored. And I thank God every day for the opportunity to lead and make a difference. Secretary Austin, Secretary Del Toro, Chairman Brown, single Screst, members, the diplomatic corps, allies, partners, family, friends of Southcom, thank you for being here. And for our congressional members as well. Special thanks to our Joint Engagement Visitors Bureau. We call it the JVB here, my 305 connection. They did a great job setting this place up and making sure everything was really good and ready to go. To the band and the color guard as well. And just U.S. Uh, Army Garrison in Miami. Really great facilities. Uh, thank you for everything you do. Let's do a round of applause, please. I'd like to start off by recognizing General Richardson, an exceptional leader, a trailblazer, and our husband, Jim. Jim. And... Uh, I don't know why every time I look at him, I just say Jim, right? So, Jim, uh, for their loyal and dedicated 70 plus years of service to our nation. General Richardson's guidance to Southcom and the impact she has made in the region has been inspiring. Our build on your efforts and work across the whole of government, our allies and partners, to ensure we continue to address the security challenges and expand opportunities in the region. No man is an island, and no one makes it this far in any organization without family, mentors, or friends. It takes a village sometimes, and it takes a spark to change destiny. I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize a few of our special guests here today uh, and friends and mentors. Uh, Admiral Michelle Howard got a chance to promote me this morning. Uh, to Admiral, I told a great story about her, and she really kind of jabbed me a few times, too. Uh, really, uh, thank you for your guidance, uh, your friendship and mentorship over the years. She's an absolute difference maker. Vice Admiral Walt Davis uh, in Connie. Uh, Admiral Davis, thanks for being here. Admiral Davis spoke at my commissioning 36 years ago, and uh, he said a lot of words. And it was really, really a really good speech. And I'll tell you, next to my dad, he was the coolest guy I knew. 
Here's a guy who looked like me, flew F-14 Tomcats. He's a Kara CEO. He's Admiral Select at the time. And now, sir, I would like to say that I remembered everything that you said, uh, but I can't. Uh, uh, I was so focused on this cute girl with pretty eyes in the front row. And so uh, I think I missed most of your pertinent points, but thank you for your support over the years. I really appreciate your guidance and mentorship. Uh, Master Chief Jeff Hutchinson is not here. I hope he's dialing in. He's a, uh, one of those, I learned about asking the chief from him. He's a testament uh, to his mentorship, mentorship that some 36 years later, he came to my uh, promotion. Uh, he's cheering us on today. He was there on my, when I took command of the ship, there when I put on one star. He took my capping bars, and he still has them somewhere. That's okay. But I will tell you, there's, a, there's hundreds and hundreds of young officers who he believed in. He, uh, uh, Commander Fisher, uh, Captain Fisher, and Commander Espy. And so he's uh, a little under the weather now. I got a chance to speak to him. He was up in spirits. So thank you so much for all, everything you've done. And again, several Marine officers and Navy officers are present today because of him. Uh, so Godspeed to Master Chief and Bert. Uh, to my fraternity brothers, who uh, stay quiet, and that's great, we'll keep doing that. Uh, they, they travel all over the world to get here today. A group of doctors, lawyers, uh, business leaders, military officers, educators who wanted to come see what this Navy thing and this joint thing was about. Uh, thanks for coming out. You have no idea what your uplifting friendship means. Uh, my mom is here from Fort Valley, Georgia, and I'm so happy she made it out. I owe everything I am to you and dad's love and encouragement and stern direction over the years. And I think I was kind of the, I was kind of, I was, I, was, I was a good son. I think I did okay. You know, I didn't, uh, I didn't get in too much trouble. So uh, I'm here right now. And to my brothers, uh, Eric and Alex, uh, family will always be family. Uh, thanks so much for being here. My brother Charles passed away in July, uh, a few months ago. And I'd like to thank his wife, Tundra, for being here. And you will always be our sister. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, to our sons, Joshua and Jordan. Well, thank you. Let's To our sons, Joshua and Jordan, two young men who have made our lives meaningful. Our oldest son, Joshua, as you know, is a naval aviator. He's preparing now for our upcoming deployment. And our house is very, very competitive. And he's quickly becoming the best. OK, you're the best aviator in the family. I'm going to say it here now. You are the best <laughs> aviator in the family. I will take a, a back seat right now and give that, that title to you for now. Uh, and our youngest son, Jordan, is the third year at the University of Virginia Medical School. He's going to be a great surgeon one day. Uh, again, we love you guys so much. And your mom and I could not be prouder of the young man you have become. <laughs> My dear Stephanie, to the cute girl with pretty eyes still in the front row, I know the scales are sometimes unbalanced, and you bear the weight of all there has to be. I hope you see that you can lean on me and together we can come as Tommy C. I love you yesterday, I love you today, I love you always. Thanks for holding the family together. <laughs> to our partners, all men and women are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Those words from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I think they speak volumes today as I think about this region and our shared neighborhood. To be clear, partnerships are our best deterrents to counting shared security and economic concerns. We will always be there for like-minded nations who share our values, our democracy, our rule of law, and human rights. Southcom is on the front line of strategic competition, and our adversaries are, have established a strong presence, jeopardizing security and stability across the Americas. The People's, People's Republic of China and Russia are sea competitors who seek to undermine democracy while gaining power and influence in the region. Transnational criminal organizations create and exploit this permissive environment while undermining the rule of law and disrupting legitimate government functions. Transboundary threats exist as well, from irregular migration, climate change, eroded democracies, to food and water insecurities. Rapidly responding to crises is not just a phrase in our mission statement. Southcom has responded, and we will respond again to earthquakes, floods, wildfires, volcanoes, hurricanes, and droughts. To be a trusted partner, you must be credible, present, and engaged. You honor us with your presence today, and I want you to know that I see you and I hear you. I will work tirelessly to understand your requirements, then work across the whole of government to deliver at the point of need, to respond to our shared threats in our shared neighborhood. 
Our vision is enduring, a secure, free, and prosperous Western Hemisphere. To the men and women of Southcom, I'm honored to stand before you today as your leader. Much has been written about leadership and the charge of demand. My commitment to you is simple. I will give you everything I have, and when the dark clouds come, the days are long, the seas are rough, look no further than right here. I will lead you. In return, I will only ask for one thing. That's your personal best. Some people wonder exactly what that is. I think Dr. Benjamin Lazamez uh, put it best when he said, whatever you do, strive to do it so well that no man living, no man dead, or no man yet to be born can do it even better. That's your personal best. Finally, to understand me is to understand the essence of survival. Every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up. It knows it must run faster than the fastest lion or be killed. Every morning, a lion wakes up. It knows it must outrun the slowest gazelle or will starve to death. It doesn't matter whether you're the lion or the gazelle. When the sun comes up, you better be running. Let's get running, Team Southcom. God bless our region, our nation, and all those who serve. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the retirement of the colors. gentlemen, please remain standing for the playing of the Armed Forces Medley.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the departure of the official party.